I'm Gerard van Heistien, a researcher at the Center for Text Technology at the Northwest University and project leader of a multidisciplinary research project on swearing and other language taboos within the South African context, but also, of course, extending to other languages and contexts linked to our situation and languages in South Africa. Since you can download the paper of this talk from the website or otherwise by scanning the QR code on your screen, I don't want to repeat all the information in the paper during the time available to me today. Instead, I want to have a more informal chat about the project with the main aim to convince you that swearing is an interesting and an important topic to research in the digital humanities. As a secondary aim, I hope to entice you enough so that you might be interested in doing your own research in the field or otherwise for you or your team to participate in and or to collaborate with us on our project. In the last part of the talk, I will therefore conclude with more details about potential collaboration, ideas and suggestion and advantages of collaborating, etc. So, in order to whet your appetite, I'm going to introduce you to each of the current sub-projects focusing on the kinds of questions we're asking in the project. So, expect more questions than answers. Let's get to some details about the project. Early one summer morning in February 2019, I was standing in the shower and thinking deeply. As linguists, we often don't succeed to reach a general male population with our research results and we don't get them to participate in our research, for example, in online surveys. What topic in linguistics would get men interested in the field of linguistics? And suddenly, suddenly the answer was right in front of me, clear as daylight. Back in the day when I was a student, uh, uh, the one thing that piqued my interest in language was swear words. I was in a men's boarding house at Varsity together with mostly engineers and medical students. So linguistics was really of very little interest to them. However, when I started gathering data for my master's thesis, which was on sexual expressions in Afrikaans, I got them talking like pirates. So once again, I realized, since I'm still highly interested in all kinds of swear words, other males might also be interested. Let's give it a go. And so the project was born from my own egotistical needs and interests. How are we talking about things that are taboo and how does the language in itself become taboo? So how are we talking about things that are taboo? And how does the language then also become taboo? That is the, that is the main question, the overarching theme of this research project. In his seminal book from 2000, Why We Curse, A Neuropsychosocial Theory of Speech, the famous psychologist Timothy Jay talks about Tourette syndrome and coprolalia. Coprolalia is the compulsive need to swear, and then Jay states it eloquently. And I quote, Many times we better understand what is normal by looking at what is abnormal. He proceeds by saying that one will not understand, and I quote again, Tourette syndrome without understanding how neurological, psychological, and cultural, in other words, social, forces interact to produce coprolalia. End quote. So, in his book then, he puts forward a theory of why we need to study the neuropsychosocial dimensions of swearing and what we can learn from these three things. Fast forward 20 years since 2000 when his book was published and we actually st uh, still see that we know 
very little. We know more, but still very little. What is more, with a view on the future, I believe we should add at least two other factors very explicitly in our interest in swearing. And those are A, linguistic, and B, computational matters. So, neuro, psycho, socio, linguistic, and computational matters. Of course, many other disciplines are involved in our understanding of such a complex phenomenon. But by investigating the linguistics side of swearing, we not only understand the human mind's processing of swearing and other taboos better, but we also get a glimpse into our past cognitions. For instance, where does swearing come from? How did it change language? How does language change? And what will it look like in future? Similarly, by including computational perspectives on swearing, we also get a glimpse into the future. For example, how does swearing and other language taboos contribute to bias in data used for training AIs? And how should AIs respond to swearing or abusive behavior by humans? I think the research possibilities are legion. And we're not even scratching the surface currently regarding these questions. So let's get into the current five sub-projects in our projects, and I'm going to discuss them very briefly uh, with you. One of the cornerstones of the project is our project website, available at fluke.co.za. Together with this webpage, we also have associated social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, as well as a special interest group on Facebook. Now, one of the secondary aims of the project is to reach a wider and especially non-traditional audience. On the one hand, to gather useful and insightful data from such respondents, but also to reach them with some of our interesting findings. As on 23 November 2021, we currently have almost 2,200 registered users on the website and on the special interest group on Facebook, just short of a thousand members. On Facebook, we can see that we have quite a normal distribution of users, albeit on the older side of the population. But that is, of course, expected from uh, an old person's platform like Facebook. Uh, and I may say that because I'm active on Facebook. From recent polls, it also looks as if we're reaching more and more non-traditional users. For instance, 57% of the respondents were male compared to a normal distribution of around about 50% or compared to uh, previous research where we had only 24% males participating in a similar poll. So that is growing from 24% to 57%, which was interesting to us and exactly what we wanted, new voices. The website is invaluable for us to gather data directly from the users. Once a user has registered and completed their demographic profile, they can participate in numerous short polls to determine the taboo value and other aspects of swear words. These polls are specifically designed to combat questionnaire fatigue. It usually takes a registered user less than three minutes to complete a poll for a specific word. The website also affords us the opportunity to share research results, interesting blogs, results from research, our podcast series, etc., etc. In addition, we share all kinds of fun stuff related to swearing, which not only serve as data, but also as a way of keeping users interested and engaged. In the subproject on swearing and the law, one of the main questions is how to classify Afrikaans swear words according to the categories identified by the South African Film and Publication Board. 
In terms of the Films and Publication Act, the board must add the label L to a film, computer game or publication to alert users that there is use of strong language, and I quote, of a mild, moderate, strong or very strong impact. However, this four-point scale is nowhere operationalized. So one of the foci of this subproject is therefore to devise such an empirical data-based scale for Afrikaans swear words in an easily accessible and understandable interface that we call the flukmeter or swear meter. Results from the polls are transformed into the flukmeter and can then be accessed by any end user, be it a member of the publication board, a publisher, an author, an actor, a parent or whoever else. They can search for and compare different words with each other, also in terms of the demographics of the respondents. Following from this, we also want to address questions like the following. Can these categories of the Film and Publication Board be predicted automatically, for example, through machine learning algorithms? Is swearing considered adult and mature content or simply as explicit content? Should adults and children be treated differently regarding swearing? Is it, for example, more okay for children to be exposed to swearing than, say, gender violence? These guidelines refer specifically to films and computer games, but what about other media, such as websites, literary texts, memes, songs, lyrics, podcasts with swear words, etc.? Should these also carry content advisories? And what are the expectations of end users, such as parents, about uh, such advisories? Lastly, given the history of censorship in South Africa, how should we balance freedom of speech and freedom of choice versus protecting the citizens, that is, for example, the children of South Africa? In another subproject, we want to create an extensive encyclopedic online and also data-driven dictionary of Afrikaans swear words, which we call the Afrikaans Flukopedia. Up to November 2021, we have already compiled a lemma list of almost 4,000 entries. And this was done in collaboration with, among others, the Woordenboek van de Afrikaanse Taal, the Handwoordenboek van de Afrikaanse Taal, watkijkjij.co.za, and a few other individuals. We are also actively looking for collaborators to help us devise innovative ways of presenting such data, ways to automatically populate such a dictionary database, etc., etc., etc. In the subproject on swearing in entertainment and the media world, the focus is on why and how content creators use swearing in entertainment and the media. We investigate the views on swearing of content creators like writers, TV and filmmakers, actors, musicians and journalists. Of special interest is how they are potentially impacted by the current cancel culture as a form of social censorship. The subproject on swearing, linguistic innovation, constructionalization and language change has the strongest linguistic focus of all the subprojects, since we investigate morphological and syntactic constructions that are specific to the domain of swearing. Previous research has indicated that swearing and other taboo language might be at the forefront of linguistic change. And by studying these factors and changes, we might get better insight into language change and also in more general and broader uh, sense of the word. Okay, so these are at this stage the five subprojects of our project. We're currently also doing some preparational work to establish yet another subproject focusing on so-called 
positive neurosciences. We know, for example, from extensive previous research in Europe and America, that swearing alleviates pain. It can serve as an analgesic when pain is experienced. But what about strength? Can swearing make you stronger? For example, why do people in the gym often swear? Because of pain or because it, because it makes them stronger? And why do people often swear when they are startled? How does swearing contribute to the release of tension in such situations? These are just some of the interesting questions that we have. Perhaps you have more. And that is why we want to extend an invitation to you to participate in our project, either by directly getting involved in one of these sub-projects or otherwise by establishing your own sub-project. So you may ask, why would I establish a sub-project under this project of yours while I might just as well start my own independent project? And sure, you may, and I seriously would welcome all endeavors and other projects to help us, the world, the digital humanities community, to understand swearing better and to create resources that researchers can use, etc., etc. So please go ahead and do it. And please let me know if you do it or let me know if you need advice or resources. We'll gladly help where we can. But at the same time, I would also like you to consider participating in or collaborating with this larger project. Why? Well, the digital humanities is in its very essence a multi and interdisciplinary effort. On my own, I would get no further than merely perhaps understanding some of the morphological patterns of Afrikaans swear words. But within a multidisciplinary team or endeavor, the opportunities are so much more exciting. So in my opinion, the topic that is swearing and our dis discipline, digital humanities, beg for a multidisciplinary approach. And I think the interesting findings will exactly be in between different disciplines, approaches and methodologies. On the practical side, by collaborating under the umbrella of this project, we offer ethical clearance for certain types of research, since the project has already received its approval from the relevant ethics committees at both Northwest University and the University of Pretoria. So at least for exploratory studies, you could get out of the blocks faster without first having to apply for ethical clearance. And if anything, you could at least use some of our experience for your own ethical clearance applications at your institution. You're welcome to ask for advice, documentation, etc. Also, as you have seen, we already offer numerous platforms to collect data, get in touch with respondents, disseminate your findings and insights, etc. etc. In short, we offer a growing community of interest. And lastly, Money, money, money. Now, here's the bad news. We don't have any money. So relax, Max. But also, we don't ask for your money. However, we do have some small bursaries available for postgraduate students, especially students in computer science, language technology, or computational linguistics, or even perhaps in linguistics, if you have a strong data-driven approach. Of course, we also have some in-kind resources available that could help you kickstart a sub-project, such as knowledge, expertise, and manpower to develop data resources like domain-specific corpora and word lists, or to help with statistics. Okay, I hope to have provided you with enough research questions to at least keep your mind busy when next time you hear or say a swear word. And to then remember that research on swearing is an enormous endeavor befitting of the digital humanities. I hope that, if you are significantly intrigued, that you will also feel most welcome to contact me to discuss potential opportunities for collaboration.
It's only through diverse perspectives from a multiplicity of perspectives on a variety of languages that we will start to understand the dynamics of the human mind responsible for producing and processing swear words and other language taboos. Thank you.